today's headlines. President Duterte declares the liberation of Marawi City from the Maute terrorist group. The armed forces of the Philippines is ready to thwart possible sympathy attacks from other terrorist groups. The European Union remains keen on investing in the Philippines. The Philippine National Police plans to give away half a million flip-flops to poor children in eastern Visayas. Good day, I'm Pia Roses Morato. Welcome to the PNA Newsroom. President Rodrigo Duterte has declared Marawi City as having been liberated from the terrorist group Maute almost five months after the initial attack on May 23. President Duterte made the declaration during a visit to Marawi City earlier today, October 17. The president's statement was short and I quote, Ladies and gentlemen, I hereby declare Marawi City liberated from the terrorist influence that marks the beginning of rehabilitation, unquote. Tuesday's visit was the president's seventh visit to Marawi City. The declaration of liberation came a day after local terrorist leader Omar Malte and ISIS Southeast Asia Emir Isnilon Hapilon were killed in Marawi. With the declaration, the rehabilitation of Marawi City is expected to follow suit. But the military, however, said that they still need to clear the city from landmines and other explosives left by the terrorists. The national government estimates to spend 50 billion pesos to rehabilitate the war-torn city. Martial law in Mindanao will stay despite Monday's death of top leaders of the Maute Group in Marawi City. The Department of National Defense said martial law would remain in effect in Mindanao as threat is still high in the island. Sabi ko nga, we may uh, be lifting or maybe this, uh, announcing the cessation of hostilities in Marawi City within this week. And then after that, uh, we'll find out, we'll assess what the, the, the entire Mindanao if uh, there is uh, a need to recommend to the President the lifting of martial law. Defense Secretary Delphine Lorenzana said yesterday that though they are looking into the possibility of lifting martial law, they have yet to assess everything, especially on the repercussions of the death of supposed emir of ISIS in Southeast Asia, Isnilon Hapilon and Omar Maute. President Rodrigo Duterte issued Proclamation No. 216 on May 23, declaring martial law and suspending the privilege of the writ of habeas corpus in the whole of Mindanao. This was a result of the attack of the Maute group in Marawi City, leading to a military action that is ongoing for almost five months now. The DND chief said they had yet to assess the situation in order for them to determine whether they can recommend the lifting of martial law to President Rodrigo Duterte. As of Monday, the number of slain Maute terrorists are placed at 822 along with 162 troops killed in action. The military is discounting the possibility of sympathy attacks of terrorists following the recent killing of Hapilon and Maute in Marawi City. Armed Forces of the Philippines or AFP Public Affairs Office Chief Colonel Edgar Arevalo said, the military is ready to thwart any possible retaliatory attacks. Arevalo said the military actively coordinates with concerned sectors, local government units, and the community in the fight against terrorism. On Monday, Defense Secretary Delphine Lorenzana said the bodies of the two terrorist leaders would be subjected to DNA tests, noting that these two have bounties on their heads from the Philippine government and foreign countries. Davao City Vice Mayor Paulo Duterte hailed the armed forces of the Philippines for the death of Abu Sayyaf leader Isnilon Hapilon and Maute Group leader Omar Maute, who were both killed during an early Monday morning siege in Marawi City. In his Instagram post, the Davao Vice Mayor thanked the AFP, especially those who gave the ultimate sacrifice to protect the Filipino people from terrorists like the Maute Group. The young Duterte said that he has nothing but deep respect for the soldiers and their family sacrifices for the Filipino people. He also urged all Filipinos to continue supporting the government troops fighting in Marawi City and elsewhere in the country. 
Vice Mayor Duterte urged his countrymen to stand united against those who want to destroy us, our peace, and the future of this nation. Authorities confirmed the death of Abu Sayyaf leader Isnilon Hapilon and Omar Maute of the Maute Group who staged attack in Marawi City on May 23. Circulated photos in the social media showed the bloodied body of Hapilon and the mutilated face of Maute. The two died during an assault by the military in a building in Marawi City, which was said to be the Maute Group's last stronghold. In the same siege, the military also rescued 17 more civilians, including a two-month-old baby. A total of 38 civilians were rescued in Marawi City this month alone. House of Representatives has approved on second reading a measure seeking to establish the Magna Carta of daycare workers. Our Congress reporter, Philaine Cervantes, files this report. Legislators approved House Bill 6550, which aims to improve the social and economic well-being of daycare workers. The bill provides for the creation of at least one daycare worker one and one daycare worker two plantilla positions, entitled to salary grade 6 and salary grade 8 respectively in all daycare centers nationwide. Principal author Gabriela Representative Arlene Bross has said the proposed law will benefit more than 84,000 daycare workers nationwide. Process said the bill aims to provide security of tenure and higher allowances and benefits for daycare workers. The bill states that daycare workers shall receive additional compensation such as overtime pay, hazard allowance, and subsistence allowance. Furthermore, the bill provides that all daycare workers shall automatically become members of the government service insurance system, Pagibig, and PhilHealth. The amount necessary to cover the salaries and benefits of daycare workers shall be charged from the Internal Revenue Allotment and the Special Education Fund of LGU's concern. Trading at the Philippine Stock Exchange or PSE resumes Tuesday even as Malacanang again suspended work in government offices in line with the second day of the nationwide transport strike. Trading and settlement at the Securities Clearing Corporation of the Philippines will also resume Tuesday, the PSE said in a statement. The Banco Central ng Pilipinas also said that their Philippine Payments and Settlement Systems, or PhilPass, will also be on normal clearing operations for the day to support the banking and financial sectors. Malacanang in Memorandum Circular 29, issued Monday night, announced another day of suspension of work in all government agencies and all levels of classes in both public and private schools nationwide to ensure the safety of state workers and students, not only from the transport strike, but the inclement weather. Suspension of work in other branches of government as well as the private sector was left to the discretion of their officials. Still to come, Taiwan opens visa-free entry for visiting Filipinos. These and more when the PNA Newsroom continues. Medyo pabuti na ako kasi sasabi kong bulok na, binibiyahe pa lang. Ay wala naman kami magawa kundi sumakay kasi nga yun lang ang, ano, ang pwede namin sakyan. Kaya lang, tulungan din naman yung mga may-ari ng jeep na bawa makapag-loan. Kasi wala naman silang pambili din ng bagong sasakyan. Dapat, depende naman sa sakyan mo talagang bulok na. Kung hmm. hindi naman ano eh, tapos alaga sa maintenance, bakit di eh, pay as a commuter po, nakita ko po na parang ano po, medyo hindi maayos yung mga jeepneys na nasa kaya natin kasi minsan madaling masiraan, uh, tapos yung ibang jeep parang nakatakot na baka pwede yung maaksidente. Para sa akin, tama naman yung mga operator. Gawa ng mahal nga yung pinoprovide ng gobyerno na sasakyan para sa mga operator. Sobrang mahal. Kaya ayaw nila na matuloy yung peace out. Ang mas magandang solusyon, kung, kung gusto makatulong ang gobyerno, pa-repair na lang yung mga lumang jeep para bago naman din na. Huwag na lang tuloy-tuloy na ganun mga karag-karag, kailangan i-repair.
Investors from the European Union remain interested in doing business here in the Philippines despite the recent statement of President Rodrigo Duterte critical to EU. Our business reporter Chris Crismundo attended the EU Philippines Business Summit in a hotel in Paranaque earlier today and here is her report. The European Chamber of Commerce of the Philippines has assured that investors from European Union remain keen in doing business in the country, despite the recent comments of President Rodrigo Duterte on EU. ECCP President Gunter Toss said some 40 companies from the EU will come to the Philippines next week to look at business opportunities, particularly in energy sector. Bilateral uh, uh, connections between the Philippines and Europe, and yes, we do expect more companies to come in. We have another sem uh, 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 forum next week, only 26th, which is the energy forum. We have 40 European companies here that are directly uh, seeking uh, uh, to set up in the Philippines, so we do a lot of business to business uh, uh, arrangements for that uh, for that uh, uh, 26 yeah? so we should see a lot more investment from the uh, from Europe into the Philippines for trade secretary Ramon Lopez he said that the EU and the Philippine government continue to engage in talks to improve bilateral trade and investments Lopez added that the Philippines and EU still continue negotiations on possible free trade agreement the Philippines is EU's 39th trading partner in 2016, with bilateral trade amounting to 12.8 billion euros. For the PNA Newsroom, this is Chris Chris Mundo. Filipinos can now visit Taiwan for a short period of time without having to apply for a visa. The Taipei Economic and Cultural Office, or TECO, says Filipinos may enter Taiwan for tourism, business, visiting relatives and attending events without the visa for 14 days. Visa-free entry will be implemented from November 1 to July 31 next year. This is a part of Taiwan's new Southbound policy, which aims to build people-to-people -people exchange of visits and an economic community between Taiwan and the Philippines. Taiwan representative to the Philippines, Gary Song Huan Lin, urged the Philippine government to grant visa-free treatment to Taiwan nationals in return. He says this will enhance bilateral tourism, economic, cultural, educational, and other areas of cooperation and exchange between the Philippines and Taiwan. The Davao City Police Office is offering free rides to all stranded passengers as the nationwide transport strike enters its second day. DCPO spokeswoman Senior Inspector Maria Teresita Gaspan said they will offer free rides to the public through their police mobiles. She said they will deliver the stranded passengers right at the doorsteps of their homes. Gaspan urged the Bawenos to not hesitate to approach the driver and crew of their mobile vehicles as they have already deployed them since 5 a.m. this morning. The Davao City government has also dispatched buses to service stranded passengers since Monday. But observers noted that most of the riding public were still able to ride public jeeps and buses as not all have joined the strike in Davao City. Piston and Davao have also declared that they will no longer be holding a strike today. Up next, the Philippine National Police eyes half a million flip-flops to be given away to poor children. These and more when the PNA Newsroom returns. The Philippine National Police is eyeing to distribute half a million flip-flops to poor children in Eastern Visayas as part of the National Children's Month celebration in November. The PNP will end the Half Million Chinelas campaign this week after soliciting support from government and private sectors in the distribution of flip-flops to children from poor families. Target areas are poor communities and rebel-infested areas. PNP Eastern Visayas Regional Director Gilberto Cruz said that the flip-flop is just a symbol of government's help for them to progress as they use the footwear every day to take a step towards progress. Participating in the collection of slippers or police stations in towns and cities in the region where individuals and groups place their donations inside a box for the campaign. Among the biggest donor of this initiative is the Filipino Chinese Chamber of Commerce and Industry 
or FCCCI, the group donated at least 800 slippers for the PNP. Last September 29, key PNP regional officials visited the town of Maslog in eastern Samar to distribute flip-flop school bags with school supplies to children. During the activity, some 499 individuals also availed of the PNP's medical and dental mission services. Tropical Cyclone Paolo has intensified into a severe tropical storm as it continues to move over the Philippine Sea, the State Weather Bureau said Tuesday. In its 11 a.m. weather bulletin Tuesday, the Philippine Atmospheric Geophysical and Astronomical Services Administration, or PAGASA, said, Paolo was last spotted at 765 kilometers east of Dian Eastern Samar, packing maximum sustained winds of up to 90 kilometers per hour near the center and gustiness of up to 115 kilometers per hour. Moving north-northwest at the speed of 7 kilometers per hour, Paolo is expected to intensify into a typhoon within the next two days. The storm's outer ray bands may bring scattered light to moderate with possible occasional heavy rains over the Bicol region, Visayas, and Mindanao. Palo is forecast to be at 760 kilometers east of Borongan, eastern Samar on Wednesday morning and at 1,075 kilometers east of Baler, Aurora on Thursday morning. It is expected to leave the country on Sunday. No tropical cyclone warning signal has been raised. Meanwhile, the low-pressure area, spotted 395 kilometers west of Coron, Palawan, will bring scattered light to moderate with possible occasional heavy rains over Palawan. Let's take another look at today's headlines. President Duterte declares the liberation of Marawi City from the mounted terrorist group. The armed forces of the Philippines is ready to thwart possible sympathy attacks from other terrorist groups. The European Union remains keen on investing in the Philippines. The Philippine National Police plans to give away half a million flip-flops to poor children in eastern Visayas. The holidays are coming soon. It's 69 days before Christmas. And that's your daily dose of the hottest news and the latest information that you need to know from the PNA Newsroom. I'm Pia Roses Morato. Good day.